Hey Resolve users, today I'm going to put together some motion graphics and I'm going to use text as my source. And the reason I'm going to use text is it's going to become very apparent to you because it's very easy to create motion graphics out of text in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started right now. So I'm starting with a blank project and I want to add some elements into my project. Okay, so make sure the effects library is selected up here at the top. It'll be white if it's selected. Go under toolbox, titles, and go to the text plus. I'm in the editing window right here, so let's go ahead and grab the text plus. Bring it over onto your timeline. It will create a new timeline for you automatically in Resolve. And I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. I'm going to go out to about 13 seconds here. Go ahead and go to that point, drag that out. And so you're going to just see this default title here. Make sure that your block that you just brought over, the text plus, is selected. And we're going to go ahead and change this. And we're going to call this circular text. You can name it whatever you want. You're obviously not going to use this, whether it's a company name, logo, whatever project you're working on, go ahead and put your text in at this location. I'm going to go ahead and use the font Open Sans. And I will change this color to more like a red color. And I want to make a couple adjustments here. In my line spacing, I'm going to just bump that down just a little bit under one. Looks pretty good. And I'm also going to change the vertical anchor. I'm going to bump it up just a little bit. Let's go ahead and go up to 0.22. Forgot to tell you, make sure the inspector is selected to see all this that I'm working on up here. Uh, after you select the text plus and you're going to have the buttons up here let's go ahead and go into the shading i want to add a stroke around my text just so i can see it a little bit better so let's go to selection element 2 make sure it's enabled uh, red outline is the default we want to change that to a white go ahead and make that change right there and i'm going to go ahead and bump this down just a little bit it's a little bit thick that looks pretty good Go back up here to these buttons. Go to the second one, which is the layout. And we want to change this. So here's where we're going to start getting a circular type selection. Under this type of layout, we want to change this to circle. And so now that's looking a little bit better. I want to make my circle size, bump that down a little bit. Let's go to 0.53. Okay, let's leave that for now. And I'll come back to this text because I want to do some animation with this text a little bit later. Okay, I want to add some tracks in here. Let's go ahead and add tracks. Add a few tracks in. So I've got three. I'm going to add one more. And then we're going to move this clip up to the very top. So it's going to sit right on top. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next item. I want to add some circles here. And there's some simple ways to do this. Let's go ahead and add a, another element here, another text plus element. And I'm going to stretch this out to the same length as the top element. Okay, make sure that your text element is selected. And you can see the title is the default name. And we're going to go ahead and change this to a red as well. Same color as the text. Any of these you can make anything that you want. This is just what I'm doing with this project. And then so we're going to go in and change the font. I'm going to go down to Wingdings. So this gives us some different characters. Um, this is a Windows machine, so I'm pretty sure that this font is usually installed on, on most different types of operating system. If not, I'm sure you can find that on the web and go ahead and install that or find something similar. I'm going to go ahead and add some new text in here. And what I want to do is a lowercase l. So this is just going to give me some circles. And I want to change the size of these. They're, they're pretty big here. So let's go down to a 0.1. And I want to change the tracking out just a little bit. Let's go to 0.13. Let's go up here to the second tab. The size is really a little bit too big. I'm going to go down to 0.56 on the size. And on the spacing of these items on the third tab here, Let's make this a little more spaced out, 1.305. Okay, so I have those elements in place. I wanna go ahead and go back to my second tab here, and I wanna change these to circular as well. 
And so that's on the same path right now. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to move this text here in a little bit. Uh, but first of all, I want to space these out a little bit more and make this a complete circle. So I need to add some more elements in here. Go ahead and add some more L's until I get a full circle. A little bit too many there, so I'll adjust my spacing and make that just a little bit. So I have pretty equal spacing all the way around the circle, and that's what I want to see there. And if I wanted to, I could add a stroke on this as well. I think that would look better, so let's go ahead and do that now. Element 2, select it, change that to a white as well. And let's just bump that up just a little bit. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add another timeline. And there's a reason I want to do that. I want to do some animation with it later. So the easiest way to do that for me is to add a new timeline. You can hit Control N or go up to File and New Timeline. I'm going to call this Yellow Circle and hit Create. It's going to take me into this new yellow circle and I want to go ahead and add a an effect here a fusion composition drag and drop that right into the timeline I'm gonna go out a little ways out to about 21 seconds it's good enough pull my timeline all the way out that 21 seconds so this one is going to be the longest timeline piece for me and so Go ahead and select that Fusion Composition. Hit the Fusion tab. We're going to make this really simple. Only a couple nodes, so stay with me, please. So the first thing I want to add is an Ellipse Tool. And I want to also add a background. So let's go out of the Ellipse into the background. Go ahead and drag this up in this corner so we can see what's going on there. Make sure that this Ellipse is selected. It's listed as a solid right now. Go ahead and click that off. I'm going to bump up the border width up to, let's say, 0.1. It's a little bit thick. I'm going to change that here in a second. Let's go to the background. Click on that. Let's change the color down to, an, to a yellow. And back to the ellipse. And let's go ahead and slide that border width down. Something more reasonable. It's looking pretty good pretty happy with that. Go ahead and bring this background output into the media out. And so this is what we're going to see in our actual video. Let's go ahead and go back to timeline one. We need to go back to the edit window to do that. So what I'm going to do is I have the yellow circle. Let's go ahead and bring that into video two. And now that yellow circle appears. Uh, just like magic into this composition and so I have one more slot left here I want to add one more item let's add another text plus go to titles again text plus and I'm gonna stretch this one out as well let's go out to about 17 seconds with this piece right here And select video one, which is the, the newest text plus I just put in there. I'll go ahead and turn off these other levels so we can just concentrate on what we're working on. And let's go ahead and type in, I want to get another L here and change this one to wingdings as well. I wonder who thought of this awesome name of wingdings. Okay, I'm going to change this to a blue. A little bit darker. That's pretty good. And let's go ahead and change the size of that up quite a bit. Let's go to, say, a 1.1. That's pretty good. I'm going to need to make some adjustments. Let's go ahead and put a stroke on this as well. I just want to have an outline. Go to Element 2, enable that. And let's change this one to a white. It's a little bit thick. I'll bring that down just a little bit. That looks excellent. Let's go back to the text. Start turning on these other sections. And so now I need to line things up here. Um, some of these fonts don't quite match up. 
but I'm going to just do some hand adjustments. So stay with me here until I get this adjusted. I will get it adjusted for you. You can watch what I do in fast motion. Here we go. Okay, I have that circle adjusted. I want to get this circular text raised up on the outline here around the outside of these circles. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, I've changed my mind. I want to change the color of these wingdings, uh, these little circles here in the center. Don't quite like that. It's matching up too much. So let me go ahead and change that so you can take a look at that a little bit better. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so we have our text in the center and we have these circles in the middle. We have our ring on the outside and our circle in the center. Now we need to do some animation with these items. And like I said, there's, there's a number of ways which text just gives us a huge advantage on doing animation. And I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. And you're going to find that really simple. So let's go ahead and select the top layer, which is the text. We want to go to tab two up here, which is the layout. And go down here to rotation. Go ahead and open that up. And I like doing the, the animation from the rotation itself. You can click this video tab up here as well and change this rotation angle, it will do the same thing. Go ahead and reset that. I'm going to go back to Fusion. I like doing it here. Let's go ahead and go back to zero. All right, so we're going to start a little bit off the edge here and give this an animation point. So when we click this diamond, it's going to start our animation. Make sure that this level is selected. Go ahead and pick that animation point right there. That just gives us a key point. And so I'm going to go up a little ways. And I want to rotate along the Z. So I'm going to go around a couple times here. All the way to that point. Let's see. It's pretty fast. And then I'm going to have it come back a little ways. kind of ricochet back and forth here. All right. And while that's going on, I want to make these inner circles also animated. So let's go to the second tab again. And we'll go ahead and animate these as well. Let's go ahead and click the rotation open so we can see those controls. We want to animate the Z direction here. Go ahead and start the animation, clicking that point there as well. And then I'm just going to go the opposite direction. So we'll go in a positive direction here. All right, that looks pretty good. So once it gets to this point, it's going to kind of hold steady. The next thing I want to do is select a time point. And in this case, I'm going to go about 11 seconds. So this is going to be my marker. Um, I'll go ahead and put that in there now. I'm going to set a marker time at 11 seconds. Next thing I want to do down here on the blue circle is go ahead and select that. We want to have the second tab open here as well. Once it stops, we're going to start animating this, this blue disk, and we're going to rotate it around the y-axis. So let's go ahead and open that rotation and set an animation key point. And I'm going to go close to the end here, and then we're just going to animate this up so it gets some rotation there. And then I want to have it stop kind of very flat here. Just so it makes a line right there. And that's about 16 seconds. And at this point, 
I want to set another keyframe on the size. Go ahead and set that. And then we're going to go off the edge here to the very end. And go ahead and make that size go all the way down to zero. So it's going to kind of disappear on us. And once that disk starts moving, which is at my marker at 11, I want to make sure that these items above it disappear. Let's go ahead and take those off. So the spinning disk is going to get rid of those items. But I don't want to do it until it's actually moving. I could put these elements on top of this disk and do animation with it spinning in this direction, but that takes a little bit more time. I didn't want to take that much time with this video. And so this is what we have so far, and we're going to go into that blue disk. And then at the very end here, what I want to do is have this circle kind of disappear. That's why I put it into a different timeline. So at this point, go ahead and make sure that the yellow circle is selected, which is your second timeline there. And in this composition, we want to make sure cropping is open. Double click it. And we're going to go ahead and set a keyframe on crop left. And we're going to get rid of this thing at this point here. I'll go ahead and reduce this down. And so you're going to get some animation of these circular items, the text, these little wing ding balls. And then we're going to go into spinning our disk. And then we're going to have everything kind of disappear there at the end. And so that's just a really simple demonstration of doing motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve 16. The Text Plus just gives us some really easy options to do these rotations, and it, it's a lot simpler, so I didn't have to get into the Fusion tab, which I know some people don't like. Um, you can, it is more powerful to do it in Fusion itself, but this way it is all menu-driven. It's pretty simple. You can kind of see what you're doing. Uh, there are some limitations you can see as I animate on top of some of these elements. I'm not getting my keyframes to show up, uh, which is a big negative. Um, hopefully they will add that into DaVinci Resolve later. Uh, so making those adjustments has to be done through these menus. Uh, it can still be done, but you can see your properties change through here. And uh, if you set markers like I did uh, previously, you can kind of set them where you're going to make the changes so it's easier to go back to those locations and make adjustments uh, if you want to do it that way. Like I said, DaVinci Resolve is fantastic with Text Plus on doing these animations. So take a look at that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please provide some comments. Ask some questions in the comments. I'll get those answered for you. For now, take care, guys.